Hi and welcome back to a new video. You will surely recognize again the Ice Giant Pro Siphon Elite. It was featured already in multiple videos, also on Linus Tech Tips, also on our channel. We did a huge insight on how it's built, like we cut it open to show the internals. We also did a huge review, also explained how this thing works, because even though it's an air cooler, it still works different than what you typically have on the market, looking at like heat pipe coolers, for example, from Noctua. This just works completely different. If you are interested in how this thing works, just make sure to check out the previous video. Apart from that, it's built quite unique. I was not impressed when we were testing the cooling capabilities of this thing last time. And now Ice Giant just sent this prototype over to us, which looks really interesting because it has a copper base, whereas this still had an aluminum base. And they also mentioned that cooling wise, this should be a huge jump forward. And I'm definitely looking forward to test this and see if it improved and if how much it improved. This video is sponsored by Hetzner and their dedicated root servers. The AX line offers a wide range of servers depending on your required CPU power, storage and memory. It starts with the AX41, which features a Ryzen 5 3600 with 64GB of memory and two 512GB NVMe SSDs for €34 Euro per month. The AX101 would come with 5950X, 128GB of ECC memory and two 3.84TB NVMe SSDs for €94 Euro per month. Of course, fully configurable with the OS you need, additional storage and gigabit connection. Find out more in the link below. We're starting off with their previous model, which I purchased and uh, also only with two fans for the start, running a 12900K. I will set it up so it's overclocked manually for easier testing. And then afterwards I will attach the additional two fans and then check out all the results. I kept the system running in idle for about five minutes so we can even out the temperature. And now we're starting Cinebench R20. And you will see exactly what we saw in our first test with the first generation Ice Giant cooler that it simply cannot dissipate the heat of the 12900K. You can see we are getting close to 200 watt, but that's about the limit from the cooler for the heat dissipation. We're constantly hitting thermal throttling. And in the end, we only can get about 9,000 points. So definitely lacking about 1,500 points here due to the cooling capacity. This is the prototype more in detail. On the right side, we have an original first generation fully made out of aluminum. That's exactly what we had in our first review. If you want to know more how this thing works, how it's built internally, then I would just recommend that you check out the first video because we also cut it open. Then you can easily understand how this works. But if you just inspect this, just keep it in mind. Then you will definitely straight notice a difference to the copper version because right now we can find a pipe that is going to the front whereas for the aluminum version we had basically both in the back. So if the fluid evaporates down here then the gas can go up to the cooler through this like huge pipe in the back, goes up here, condenses and flows back down through this pipe. From what I can tell, everything on this cooler, except for the base, is still made out of aluminum, which is also totally fine. So if you do some like scratching test on here, because it seems to have a bit of like an oxide layer on it, which is totally fine. But if you scratch on it and you can see it's like shiny, silverish, then it's definitely aluminum. Whereas the entire base, like the entire evaporator, now is fully made out of copper. That's definitely interesting because just connecting aluminum and copper is already a challenge. And yeah, looking forward to see the performance. Got the cooler mounted and at this point I just want to remind you again that this is a prototype and obviously this will look different if this thing comes to production. I guess it will also be like painted black on here, maybe also be painted black on here or some nickel plating, I don't know. We will figure it out. One thing I still don't really like that much about the ice chain cooler is the mounting mechanism. One reason for that is that you have these standoffs and you mount them directly in the back blade like on top of your main board without any kind of protection. From my point of view, it would be better if you had some kind of like a plastic washer on here for additional board protection. But let's check out the performance. There's one thing I straight noticed and that is that the idle temperature of the CPU, especially the P-cores, seems to be at least five degrees Celsius lower. But let's just straight check what kind of package power we're getting and if we're seeing a thermal throttling. Now that looks much, much better, like much, much better. Temperature is between 80, like we had 96 on one core, seems to be the hot core out of those because one is at 82, the other one is at 96. But still it's 230 watts, no problem, no thermal throttling, even though we seem to have a hot core on this CPU. But the performance is exactly at what we were expecting, no performance loss, so that's great. 
I'm done with all the testing and we will straight get to the chart of Cinebench R20 with multi normalized to 40 dBA. You can see the room temperature about 28 degrees Celsius. And we're starting off with our base, which is the Ice Giant Prosiphon Elite in the reddish line. That is constantly above 90, like 92, 93 degrees Celsius. What we measured here is the P-Core average. We neglected the E-cores simply because they are not really relevant for 1200K or KS performance. They are not limiting the thermal headroom. That's why we're just looking at the average temperature of the P-cores during the test. What I also want to highlight is that some of the P-cores during the testing of the ProSiphon Elite Aluminium were hitting the 100 degrees Celsius mark, which is resulting in thermal throttling and also loss of performance, which is what you can see directly looking at the right side of the chart, simply because the test ran longer for the ProSiphon Elite Aluminium, which you can see on the right. The red line is a little bit longer than, let's say, for the Deepcool Assassin 3 and the Noctua NHD 15, which both passed the testing without thermal throttling, and they both perform about the same. If we now add the blue line to our results, that is the Ice Giant Pro Siphon Elite in the Copper Edition. And even though it extends a little bit to the right, which is only half second, so that could be tolerance, measurement tolerance of hardware info, the test was not thermal throttling with the ProSiphon Elite in the Copper Edition and we had about 1 to 1.5 degrees Celsius lower temperatures on average versus the Deepcool Assassin 3 or the Noctua NHD 15. So that is surprising and also a very good result, a very, very good result. But at the same time, I also want to point out that this doesn't mean that this is the best cooler you can get like overall. Because if we now add the Aros Liquid Cooler 360, which is also not the best AIO you can buy, but it's just one AIO 360 for reference, you can see this is again about five to six degrees Celsius colder. But you also have to keep in mind that an AIO has more buffer mass because of the water inside. Water can take up a lot of heat in a very short time period. So that's definitely a benefit an AIO has. But then you also have to keep in mind that we're testing open bench, which benefits the air cooler because theoretically, if you would put these inside a closed system, the air cooler would always have to work with a little bit of warmer air inside. Whereas if you're running an AIO, you can always go for cold air intake. So theoretically, the difference inside a closed system could be even bigger for the AIO. In the end, I also tested the four fan configuration quickly in R20, which at the beginning of the test didn't really make any difference. But you can see at the end of the test, and that is the green line in the chart right here, you are gaining about another half degree Celsius. Obviously, just testing R20 multi and nothing else is not going to give you the full picture. That's why we also did some gaming benchmarks. That was PUBG over a period of 20 minutes, again, taking the average of the P cores during the time period. And as you can see, the Ice Giant Pro Siphon Elite in the copper version performs great. It performs exactly on the same level as the Deepcool Assassin 3 is slightly better than the Noctua NHD 15. But again, the AIO is just about five degrees Celsius better. I also want to highlight that all the air coolers were tested with dual fan configurations, same as the Ice Giant coolers. Only the AIO, which is a 360, was featuring three fans. That's why I did one more test with the Ice Giant Pro Siphon Elite Copper with four fans. And this results in a slight benefit of about 0.8 degrees Celsius, which for gaming just won't matter at all. But for maybe benchmarking, this could also give you two, three more degrees Celsius if you occupy it with four fans. It is still quite impressive what kind of improvement Ice Giant pulled off going from the aluminum edition to the copper edition in a quite short time period. The jump in performance on the copper version of the ProSiphon Elite can definitely just be explained by the better thermal conductivity of the copper as material. If you just look up thermal conductivities online, let's say on Wikipedia, you will find values on aluminum, for example, for 220 watt per meter Kelvin. Copper often is listed above 400. So you can, in theory, guess that it's like twice as good but, and we will have a huge video coming next week, Sunday, about this entire topic. We measured the thermal conductivity of both materials that we have right here. We will explain more in detail next Sunday how everything like this is done. But I can tell you that this was 143 watt per meter Kelvin and this was 385. And there you can see a huge difference to what you can find somewhere online in some databases, often because those are listing pure materials, let's say aluminum 99.9%, .9%, whereas whenever it's like processed aluminum, if you want to mill it or whatever, cast it, 
then it's completely different. It's usually some kind of alloy that uses additional materials, which has a negative impact on the thermal conductivity. And that's why we figured out this is 143, this is 385. But that's still more than twice as good and explains why this was fairly bad because 143 is not really good. 385 on the other hand is pretty awesome. Yeah, so that will be coming next week Sunday. Apart from that, I will be looking forward to see what Ice Giant is doing in the future because that is looking really promising. I didn't want to do a huge amount of testing on temperatures because it's not a final unit. Things might still change when it comes to performance, they might still improve it. And then I think it just makes more sense whenever they have a final unit that is retail, that we just get a retail unit and then test more in detail and see what they really brought to the table. Apart from that, I also heard that they are working on a 120 millimeter version of this cooler, which I think should be really nice, should be much smaller, which then maybe has less downsides because right now, you still have the issue, for example, with both of them that they are sitting rather close to your memory, you, so you cannot use high memory dims. Let's say such as Corsair Dominator, they would collide with the cooler and it's fairly heavy. And if they work on a single 120 millimeter uh, cooler, obviously also depends on the pricing, then this should be really interesting. The pricing will also be interesting for this one. If this is maybe 250 euro, then it would be way too expensive, but I have no information on like pricing, so that's something we definitely have to wait for. Then there's one more information I would like to give you. Also, spoiler, I have no idea about any like investments like this. It's not like financial recommendations from my side. I just noticed that currently it's possible to invest into Ice Giant as a company. I'm not even sure if that's like some buy-in into the company or if it's crowdfunding, you just can read it up in the link in the description. I just found out that there are a lot of information they're giving out about the company, what they're doing. So this might just be interesting for you to look at. Again, I'm not investing in there. I have no, no idea about it, just as a disclaimer. All right, so definitely looking great from what I can see so far, considering that this is still a prototype, will be very interesting to see what they can pull off in the future once this is final and once they maybe have a 120 millimeter version. Thanks for tuning in, so next time, bye bye.